Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Uh, most preppers will have some kind of desire to have a, a rural retreat, whether that's just a bug out location to go to if their home becomes untenable, or for many that will be an idea that they would like to move off grid into somewhere rural and set up some kind of off grid homestead. Certainly that's something that I would love to do long term and I regularly spend time trying to find land to buy so I can do just that. So let's take a look. I've spent a couple of years now looking around trying to find a piece of land that was suitable for use as a off-grid homestead or small holding type use and that also was uh, within the price range that I could actually afford without getting into massive debt. Um, finding land that fulfills both of those criteria is extremely difficult and this is what I normally end up doing. Well it's Thursday night and I've come home from work I've had my dinner and I'm doing what I do most nights actually. Um, I sit on the computer and I scroll through lots and lots of advertisements from lots and lots of estate agents and I look for land that's uh, within my reach in terms of price. Um, a little bit different today with this video in that I'm trying something new that I've not tried before so excuse me if it doesn't go according completely to plan um, but I'm recording from the screen as I look at the laptop um, I see quite a few people on YouTube do this I had no clue how to do it I've been experimenting the last couple of days I think I've figured it out if I have great if I haven't <laughs> apologies and this video probably won't go out um, but here I am anyway, I'm scrolling through, um, there are a couple of websites that I normally look at, um, but here in the UK um, I think it would come as quite a shock to certainly people in the United States and probably a lot of other countries around the world as well. It'll come as a shock as to um, the sheer exorbitancy of the price of land here in the UK. And worse than that, I guess, um, once you have your land or you've found a piece of land that you want to try and buy, you search through the sales particulars and you find that there are so many restrictions as to what you can and can't do with land that you own here in the UK. Um, there's lots of, of attractive looking priced pieces of land. There's a piece here, if you looked at it face value, £10,000. You've got 3.87 acres. Actually, that's cheap for land in the UK. Um, however, having lived up in the Lake District in the UK, which is where this is, um, I know that that piece of land is probably one of the highest points uh, in terms of elevation in the UK, it certainly is in terms of um, the heights of the motorway. The motorway that runs very close to this, that is the highest point on that motorway. Uh, I forget how many hundreds of metres it is now, but suffice to say it's more land, it's extremely high up in the air. Um, you'll struggle to grow anything crop-wise, um, it is moorland and the winters are very harsh and access will be pretty much impossible during the winter time. Um, I did take a look at this, these fields, um, there is no roadside access, you've got to go down a rough track that tractors or farm machinery use um, and even that would be pretty much impossible in winter so it's a non-starter. Price looks great for the size of land or it does here in the UK anyway but it's not viable really for anything um, in terms of growing crops. Um, good example here, the advert is asking £11,500 for what is essentially a bit of rough tarmac or gravel with a crappy looking fence around it. 
uh, it's it's 24 square feet not even meters 24 square feet of crap parking land you'd probably get a car on there and that would be about it and they're asking 11 and a half grand for that piece of land um, as I scroll through sometimes you might see these little heart shapes filled in with a nice little red heart that indicates that it's something I've looked at and liked um, so you might see a few of those as I scroll through there's one there look um, similar kind of thing to the one I just discussed um, this is £15,000 for 10.8 acres so again in terms of price for acreage it looks really attractive and a, a bit of a bargain uh, which it is in terms of price but again it's very very close to the last one that I just discussed it's moorland in the hills you're not going to grow anything on it um, it's completely barren the wind will whip across there winter time the snow will fill that up you'll not get onto it um, so unless you just want something to look at and take a picture of a snowy scene in winter it's not much good for anything else continue scrolling through um, as I click on this the um, the voice will go off a little bit I have practiced with this earlier so forgive the pause as I scroll to the next page hopefully that's back on now without killing the sound I'll continue scrolling through because there are some that I do want to um, go and have a look at this weekend over the last couple of days uh, there's at least two maybe three that have popped up over the last couple of days that I am interested in going to look at um, this actually is one of them um, it's down for a guide price of £20,000 um, it's not a million miles away from me I'm guessing probably just under an hour away so whilst it's not ideal in terms of it's close to where I live um, it's not that far away certainly weekends I can go down and spend the entire weekend there I could take the camper van and um, really do quite a bit of work the thing that's really attractive with this um, is a combination of location size and what's already on the land it's not exactly a huge plot 0.88 of an acre so it's not even a full acre um, but it is in a really nice location quiet rural nothing much around it in terms of, of houses let alone significant urban population you've got a nice uh, grass paddock there it has been used for um, horses to to roam on and as you scroll through the pictures you can see that it's got some buildings already on it um, they're not fabulous in size but the footprint is there for you to build on so you could in theory take all of those three out and replace it replace those three with one new building um, and have something of quite a decent size and you've even got another little one over there a um, few of the benefits of it it's got a tarmac drive access straight off a tarmac road so that's great the road's not huge but it's certainly sufficient and it's got more tarmac hard standing around the buildings um, in bad weather or winter time that is a bit of a benefit actually you're not uh, going to be trailing in uh, through loads of muddy tracks you've got some decent hard stand in there to go at so I am really interested in going to look at that I will be going down at the weekend to take a little look um, on the downside it's a guide price of 20,000 they say guide price because it is actually going up uh, for an auction later on this year but it does have buildings on already which is a real benefit because not that many pieces of land do have uh, they do have planning permission granted already so they've not been illegally put there and you end up with a big fight with the authorities later when you try to replace them and it's also got mains water on site which again is a bit of a benefit um, I would definitely look at rainwater harvesting 
uh, as a long-term solution, but as it gets you started, and certainly until the grid went down, you've already got mains water on site. So lots in there uh, to be interested in with that bit of land. So carry on scrolling down, see what else we've got. Uh, some of these have been on for quite a long time and quite rightly so because they are just daylight robbery um, in terms of price for what you're actually getting for your money. Um, I have been to look at a few before. Um, that's the one that I just looked at with you. Uh, another interesting thing with this actually while we're on the subject of um, ridiculous pricing, you do get an awful lot of um, access restrictions or usage restrictions on land here in the UK. Um, so you're paying over the odds in terms of money per acre um, and even though you are buying the land, it's yours, um, many of the pieces of land that I've looked at for sale and pretty much all of them in fact will have some kind of restriction, uh, but you'll have pieces of land that look great but then you suddenly find when you read through the detail that um, there's a public footpath runs across the land so you can have anybody, Tom, Dick and Harry, doing what they want walking through the middle of your field. You'll have some that have access rights granted to other people so you have a nice track into your field and then you find that somebody else has rights to use that track and then cross your field to get to their field. You'll find some that only have pedestrian access, they don't have vehicle access uh, to the land. You'll find um, nice little pieces of woodland or maybe stretches of uh, land with uh, a river running through them. Uh, so you would expect to be able to have the rights to shoot or to fish on your land. And you find that actually as part of the sale agreement, the person selling that land or that piece of riverbank will retain those rights. They will not pass them on to you. So you buy the land, you own the land. But the owner, previous owner, can quite merrily come along whenever they feel like it and shoot the birds on your land or in your wood or fish the fish out of the river that runs through your land. And you can't. Um, it's amazing, some of the restrictions. Um, woodland especially has lots of restrictions. Um, some of them say you can't harvest the timber because the trees are protected. Uh, you're not allowed to change of use, so you can't convert part of the wood to a field to grow crops. Um, they have restrictions or total bans on any kind of development, even putting a caravan on there or building a stable or a field shelter on there. And lots of them have restrictions where you're not even allowed to camp on your own land. It's crazy. Um, the biggest killer for most of these and this one actually that I'm going to look at, I'll just quickly flick into it again. So bear with me as the sound disappears for a second. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this on the video, but um, many pieces of land that I've looked at have something uh, contained within the sales agreement which is called a development clawback or uplift clause. And essentially what that means is that when the person sells you the land, they write uh, a condition in the sales agreement that says that if at any time over a given period of years, this can be anything from 10 years to 50 years in the examples that I've seen, uh, any planning permission approvals that you get for you to make a development to the land over that period of time, um, it will result in an increase in the value of that land. And the person selling you that land is entitled to claw back um, a percentage of that increase in value. So for example, this piece of land is for sale for 20,000. Um, it probably will go for more than that because it's in an auction, but for sake of argument, let's say you did sell for 20,000 and after a year you decided that you wanted to build a stable block on that land. The uh, council gives you approval on your planning application to do that. 
the estate agent then comes round, revalues the land and says, aha, because you've got that approval to develop the land and put the stable block on it, that's increased the value of the land from the original 20,000 uh, to 25 or 30,000. So the difference between the two, say uh, the estate agent said it's now worth 30 and you paid 20, that's an increase of 10,000 uh, pounds. And in the case of this land, you'll see that the clawback clause says that the seller is entitled to 30% of any increase in value of the land over the next 25 years. So you could put in an application for planning for a sale, get that approved, price goes up by 10 grand. The original seller gets 30% of that increase. A few years later on again, you get permission to build a house on there. A state agent comes around, values the land. It's now gone up by 50,000 um, pounds. So the seller again gets a percentage of that increase, 30% of the increase in value and so on and so on for 25 years. Many pieces of land I've seen uh, have clawback clauses such as that built into the sales agreement. It's just pure daylight robbery. Anyway, I've been rambling on for long enough looking at these. Uh, there are quite a few that I do want to look at at the weekend. I have seen lots over the years so far. It's extremely difficult though. I mean, there's a good example. 23,500 for this small plot of land. Um, I have looked at that and I have done some measurements to find out how big it is because it doesn't actually tell you in the description, probably because they're trying to create the impression that it's bigger than it is. Did I say that out loud? Surely an estate agent wouldn't do that, would they? Um, but that piece of land there is actually 110 feet by 74 feet. So it certainly isn't big. And they're asking 23,500 for it. And then just to add insult to injury, there's a little, they call it a shepherd's hut. It's like a little tiny house uh, for holiday use uh, on there. Um, that's not included in your 23,500. You don't get that. If you want that, you have to pay extra for it. So yeah, lots and lots of pieces of land at exorbitant prices with lots of restrictions around them. It is no wonder I am slowly going crazy and thinking that I might never actually get to have my own piece of land that I can actually do something with. But we shall see. Anyway, despite the frustration, I will keep on looking because you never know when that bargain piece of land that you've always been searching for might just come along. I'll certainly be looking at the weekend and uh, if I do discover something, believe me, you'll be the first to know. Well, that's it for this video. I do hope that you found something in there that was of use to you. If you did like the video, please do click on the like button. Also feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. As always, welcome any comments, questions or suggestions you might have. Um, how are you getting on finding a piece of land? If you're in the UK, are you having the same frustrations that I am? Or perhaps you might know somewhere to look that I don't know. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.